Hello, welcome to Locked on Sharks, your premier podcast for your favorite team in the Bay Area. My name is JD Young, and I am doing a solo show today. Um, Kyle's a bit under the weather, and I'm taking my kids trick-or-treating tonight, so just kind of had a uh, yeah, small time to record. So we're, I'm, I guess, no, we today, I'm going to be talking about um probably one of the most improbable wins for the sharks in a very very long time um dealing with seven covid uh cases uh logan katorna playing five guys coming off the barracuda uh to come in in a pinch and play and bring the sharks to a two to one overtime win based on timo myers uh, overtime goal and yeah, so we're going to dive into this game um, as soon as we get through our fun intro here. Your Locked On Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yeah, so again, the Sharks uh, winning a 2-1 to one game against the Winnipeg Jets in overtime. Timo Meyer with a game winner on the 4-on-3 power play. But the big story of this game is the Sharks just dealing with the adversity of, you know, so many players going on COVID, including Eric Carlson, uh, Shimmick, Vlasic, Jake Middleton. So that's, that's you know, four-sixths of your defense just snapped out of the game. You know, uh, Noah Gregor from the CUDA wasn't available because he was on COVID. Bob Bugner, the head coach, um, Jonathan Darlene, and then uh, Matt Nieto, who's been hurt. But all those guys just taken out of the lineup. So and for the Sharks to be able to call up. So they called up um, our good friend, John Leonard. Um, they also called up uh, Ryan Merkley, who made his debut. Uh, Santeri Hataka, who made his debut as well. Um, Malash and then, um, you know, and Megna. Um, so just a bunch of guys from the CUDA who, you know, came in, you know, a lot of these guys barely. Oh, and then also Nick Merkley. So a lot of these guys who, you know, played less than, you know, 40 games in the NHL, you know, I think Megna has played a couple with the, with the ducks and, you know, John Leonard got about 40 games last year. And a lot of these guys, you know, very, very limited experience um, coming into the game. And especially in a game where you are, don't even know if you're going to play the game until 45 minutes before the puck drops. Uh, Logan Couture was also out. His was not COVID related. He was feeling under the weather. And I think it was just one of those precautionary things to make sure that he is uh, safe. Um, as I'm recording this, 3.30 on Sunday afternoon, no further news on the COVID cases. We'll probably find out more Monday morning. Um, today was an off day for the Sharks. Today, Sunday was an off day for the Sharks. And their next game is until um, Tuesday against the Buffalo Sabres. So, just kind of crazy, crazy stuff going into the game. I mean, they pushed the game back, you know, 15 or half an hour before they even started the game. So just a lot of craziness before the game started. So um, personally finding out like, OK, we're the Sharks are going to be dealing with, you know, a lot of guys coming in, um, getting these. I was very excited about um, Haraka and Merkley. Just wanted to see how they did. And we'll dive into them um, a little bit later. But again, just the what the, the Sharks had to deal with going through here. And then the Sharks, you would have ex, you know expected them to come out flat, stuff like that. This was honestly, I thought, one of their best games that they've played. They had a bunch of chances. Um, William Eklund just setting guys up. Uh, Nick Benino probably had two or three golden chances that he just wasn't able to bury. You know, there was uh, the Sharks did a very good job, especially in the first two periods, uh, according to um, natural stat. Uh, natural stat trick of kind of driving play and driving those high danger chances in the first period, they had seven high danger chances, um, you know, at five on five in the second period, they had two and then they kind of let the foot off the gas as, as Winnipeg was trying to climb back into that game, but just a lot of really fun back and forth hockey. And I thought all of the, especially the, the, the young guys, I thought they played really well. Um, you know, like, like I said, with Hadika and Merkley, um, Hadika, I thought looked a lot better than Merkley personally. Um, I don't think he should be in the press box anymore. I know there was a chance of him playing this game 
if Shimmick or Vlasic were available. But he, to me, proves like he's the real deal. So just the way he was able to like back check on that Ellers play where, you know, um, how to he fumble the pass on the on the blue line. But then he was able to recover um, hunt down Ellers, who's a very fast guy and able to, you know, stop him on a back check without drawing a penalty on a breakaway. It, that was very well done and, and stuff like that where. You're not seeing that from Shimmick and you're not seeing that from Vlasic. And I think Haruka, he provides a higher ceiling than those guys. I mean, yes, he's going to make rookie mistakes like that, but you're going to be able to, you know, I think he does a better job in the transition. He does a better job, you know, just with his speed compared to those guys. And he's going to be able, so if he does make a mistake, he's going to be more likely to be able to recover from that mistake. And going forward, he should be an everyday player for the Sharks. And I don't know how, after, um, you know, Bob Bugner watches the tape for this, I don't know how you, can not keep him in the lineup, especially after what we've seen from, from plastic and Shimmick. Um, according to hockey stat card, um, so Terry Hadaka, he was one, two, three, four, the fifth best player for the, uh, the fifth best skater for the sharks on Saturday's game. So he was behind Nicholas Maloche, who was for some, like, I like Maloche, but I, I, I still like Hadaka more, but he was, you know, I thought one of their best players and he did a lot of, a lot of great stuff on the ice. Um, before we get into Ryan Merkley's debut, let's go ahead and take a quick break and talk to you guys about our friends over at direct TV. Does this sound familiar to you? You've got one device that lets you catch the game live. Another lets you stream your favorite shows. You're watching sports highlights on your phone. You've got your neighbor's best friends log in for the good stuff. Well, I want to tell you guys about a simple way to get all your entertainment you love without the hassle and a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called Direct TV Stream. It brings all your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before. So you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes, no need to buy another device ever again. And the best part, there's no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter, clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with Direct TV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible devices required. Content varies by package. So next, Ryan Merkley. Um, Merkley, so I thought he played a so-so game. You can definitely see the flashes of like, oh, oh, this is what Ryan Merkley can be, um, you know, especially on the power play. He made some great moves down on the power play um, and then in the offensive zone to where he's just, you know, kind of making dudes look silly by skating in. He had, a, um, you know, coming in in the circle and setting guys up. But there's still some stuff where it's just like a couple times where like he's losing a foot race and you expect with the guy. I mean, Merkley, if you're not going to be the biggest guy, which of course Merkley isn't, then you need to kind of be faster and be it's I don't want to say it's an effort thing, but it looks like it sometimes where, and that's fine with guys who just make it look easy, but at time, like you still want a little bit more from him. Uh, so Ryan Merkley played 16 minutes and 11 seconds, which was uh, the third most of the defensive pairs um, or sorry, fourth most behind. Uh, so Brent Burns and his monster th almost 29 minutes uh mario ferraro 25 minutes uh how 16 21 and then merkley 16 11 and then he had uh, merkley had almost two minutes of power play time which is good to see that's why he's there so to drive the power play but there's just a couple times where like you know races to the puck at like the blue line where you need to you know win that that battle to keep the puck in and keep the offensive going or just out of position a little bit here and there um again it's the first game he basically find found out that morning that he's going to be playing so you know he played a ton of minutes for the barracuda the night before but you know stuff like that with that that's going to be stuff that he needs to work on and you know like again the offense is there and we saw a lot of great stuff offensively but for him to kind of be an everyday player for the sharks he's going to need to work on that um defensive structure and and stuff like that but um overall i thought it was i would give it a, a solid b out of him again i still thought Hadaka looked a little bit better but the signs are there for the mercury window so we're that that's good to see um next let's give a second to, to brent burns who is a freaking monster um he played like i said he played 29 minutes um in the first period alone he had 10 over 10 minutes and then they kind of started to trim his minutes back a little bit too but then 
Um, in the overtime, he drew the penalty from Ellers when Ellers kind of fumbled the puck, and then Brent Burns basically just trucked him um, to draw the penalty. And if Ellers hadn't have dragged him down, he would have been off to the races there. I mean, um, to try to score on a on a breakaway. And uh, Brent Burns, you know, he can do that. So that yeah, hats off to him to to. And I know that sometimes his defense isn't there, but like just basically having to to carry all these kids around um yeah he was he was a monster last night his his fancy stats aren't that great like his defensive numbers aren't that great but again being asked to play almost half the game and and there's not much behind you especially with a lot of kids out there um yeah and again drawing the the game winning penalty and assisting on the game winning uh shot to timo like yeah brent burns was a monster that that's why he's there's no one else like him with just how strong he is, especially the way he takes care of his body. Um, I'm the same age as Brent Burns, as you guys famously know, Kyle likes to laugh and I can barely get up and down the stairs without getting winded. And that dude just played 29 minutes without, you know, a care in the world. So shout out to Brent Burns. That was, that was crazy effort from him. Um, let's, let's talk about the forward. So uh, Bear Banoff, so great game. He ended up playing with Hurdle and Meyer. Um, he was all over the ice last night or yesterday. Had a great assist where he did kind of 90% of the work on the uh, the Hurdle goal. Was able to just beat his man, um, die, drive it to the net, and then just kind of backed it in there. And then Hurdle was able to clean it up. But that's what we want to see from Barabanov where he's kind you know, like it feels like he can kind of get lost on the ice, but when he's doing that stuff, and I think maybe playing on that second line instead of Rudy, which we've been big fans of the, on the show of Rudy, but sometimes, you know, I, I, like I think Rudy's better kind of like playing on that third line. And then if you need him to jump up into the second line, um, cause some guys aren't, aren't just feeling it, that's where Rudy should be playing. But, um, but yeah, bear ban off. I would like to see him with the hurdle Eklund line when everyone kind of gets back to being healthy and see if he can kind of contribute. Cause that hurdle line, if I feel like Eklund, Eklund has earned his keep hurdles, you know, hurdles, Tomas hurdle. But I think there needs to be a little, something else there. Just like how we see on that first line between where there's a nice kind of distribution of like, you know, Timo right now is being a monster and just driving play. Couture can do whatever you need him to do. And then Jonathan Darlene's your finisher. I feel like we need like, a little bit better structure on that second line with that, where, you know, if um, Hurdle's driving play, Eklund's being your facilitator, and then you need like that finisher. And I'm, I'm not sure Bear Banoff is, but I'd like to see him get a couple games run here with that line to see if he can maybe be that finisher. Because we've seen it in, you know, the nine game sample size everyone likes to point to with, with last year on a very bad Sharks team where he was scoring at a ridiculous pace. But um, I would like to see if he can maybe do it for a little bit longer. Um, and, you know, playing with, I think playing with Hurdle and Eklund would give him a chance with that, especially, you know, Eklund who played outstanding last night had a bunch of great plays was able to you know he's like i said he set up nick benito's a bunch of times like even where nick benito who's been playing in the league for a thousand years you know he's seen it all done it all and he wasn't expecting eklund to make these passes and eklund's completing these passes to him you know especially where there's one um benito's kind of parked on the opposite side of of hellebuck there's two defenders in there and Eklund just needles it through and there and Benito just wasn't expecting any fans on the shot. Like it was an open net that he would have scored on. And, you know, there was a couple of plays like that where, um, you know, you'd like to have Nick Benito finish us off. I know he's not making, you know, he's supposed to be your third line defensive center, but you still need a little offense on the third line. And I know last night he's playing the second line, but like those are plays where you know, if they'd scored on a couple of those plays, then you're not worrying, you know, you're not trying to hold a lead, a uh, one goal lead for the entire third period as, as Winnipeg is trying to fight back. So, you know, and this, this team, we like the direction that the offense is going, but they're still a little offensively challenged and you got to finish on those plays. So um, I think Nick Benito back on the third line with LeBanc and Rudy would that, you know, like they're going to be doing fine defensively and they can, um, you know, hopefully chip in a little bit here offensively with, with LeBanc and Rudy, I guess, driving the offense. But again, just a little bit more offense out of Benino, who, you know, he's been kind of pretty quiet so far on the score sheet. I think, uh, let's see, this year he has no 
goals, assists, or points. So yeah, we would like to see some Nick Benito points. Um, I know it's nice to have him in that shutdown role, but you need some more secondary scoring. You know, you can't get Lord Jasper Weatherby can't pro- be providing all your secondary offense. So um, before we kind of wrap this thing up, let's go ahead and take one more break where we are going to talk about our good friends over at Built Bar. So Built Bar, they're amazing because they have so many delicious flavors. My favorite, if you will, is Cherry Barcia. Uh, my wife's favorite is the Coconut Brownie. I know Kyle's a big fan of the Coconut Brownie as well. So, But the great thing about Built Bar is they have so many different flavors. And if you don't know what your favorite is, you can actually get a mix box where they'll send you two of each of the nine different flavors. Not only are their flavors, uh, Built Bar flavors great, but they're also healthy too. They have 17 to 18 grams of protein. The calories range from 130 to 180 um, per bar, only four to five grams for sugar, and only four to five grams of net carbs. They've got amazing flavors, all tasty and all healthy. So go over to built.com and use the promo code uh, LOCKED15 and you get 15% off your order. Again, use the promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. All right, before we finish this off, um, it's Timo time. That dude <laughs> has been a freaking monster all game, all season long. Um, so <laughs> let's see. Timo Meyer. So some of his uh, fans. So he played 22 minutes um, last night. He had, while he was on the ice, um, Scoring chance, 14 scoring chances for his team while he was on the ice, six high danger chances, and then uh, expected goals for 1.29 for Timo Meyer. Um, in all situations, dude has been a freaking monster this year. Just like this is the Timo Meyer that we've wanted to see for so long, where it's just like every time he takes the puck, it's just it's almost like the LeBron thing where it's just like I'm just gonna put my head down, I'm just gonna bully my way to the net and there's nothing you can do about it and he's been so good at doing that this year and and you know and it's i mean playing with better players helps you know not being on the third or fourth line um like we've seen with with timo and a couple you know previous years when he's been in the doghouse but like where he's just like i'm gonna put this team on my back right now we're down you know a bunch of players and he just has been a monster and that goal too where he you know, it was a great pass from from Burn or from uh, LeBanc at the top, but like he just shot it, it bounced off a guy and went in, and that that's what you want to see from Timo. He's not going to always, he's not going to have the highest shooting percentage, but he's just going to keep firing shots until it goes in. And one day he's actually literally going to put a puck through a guy's chest, and it's going to be great. So, um, yeah, if if Timo keeps, if he's the engine of this team, like which we've been hoping for, um. You know that that's good things. That means that's less pressure off Hurdle. That's less pressure off Couture. That's you know if less pressure off Eklund to have to kind of be the franchise savior, and uh, less pressure off uh, you know Darlene who's a rookie as well. Like this is what we wanted from Timo, and he's been living up to the expectations so far this season. And you know there's some games coming up here against some uh, very beatable opponents, and I think this homestand Timo is going to keep keep cooking. So. Um, I want to also talk about our, our good friend, John Leonard, who I thought had played really well, too. Um, he was kind of in the middle of the pack when it comes to the the, the fancy sets. So I think John Leonard, he played 11 minutes. Um, of course, he forced six. Of course, he allowed 10. This is at all situations. Um, but I don't know. I just... I kind of like him a little bit more than Matt Nieto right now. Um, I would like to see him get a little bit more run with, with the Sharks. I, he's been playing really well with the Barracuda and kind of lighten it up down there. And I just, I think he provides a little bit more spark. Um, I know his defense isn't going to be as great as Matt Nieto's, but I think it's comparable enough where you can maybe draw a little bit more offense out of him. So I know Nieto's on the COVID list right now, and he's been a little little day-to-day right now. But like I would keep Leonard up. Um, and let him play over, you know, like your Lane Pedersons or, you know, um, Gadovich, who I thought looked pretty good, but like, 
I don't know. I just, I want to see John Leonard get a little bit more run here. So, you know, he, we wanted him to go down and, and play well at the Barracuda and he's done that. And I think it's, you know, now's a good chance for him to kind of get a run while you're playing at home and for the next couple games. And, um, you know, you like against some weaker competition and I want to say weaker, but some beatable competition where he can, you know, kind of maybe play that third line or play that fourth line with, you know, if he's playing with Jasper Weatherby or if he's playing with Nick Benino, like, let him see how he does in that, those roles. And um, and then if he's still not, you can still send him down. He's waivers exempt. So it's not like you have to worry about that. So yeah. Um, again, this, this, as we close out here, this sharks win was pretty impressive. Just the way that they were able to kind of come together on such a short notice and, and play well, this is a, you know, if this game had been played last year or the year before, like the sharks are losing six to one because, you know, they just, you know, like they don't have that, they didn't have that grit. I don't want to say grit. I hate that. But like, there's that camaraderie that this team has that, that we haven't seen from them in a while. And, you know, if it's guys sticking up for guys or just like, you know, guys kind of playing out of their minds and kind of rising up to expectations that we haven't seen before. And it's, it's made for fun hockey in the, the short part of the season, you know, and I think that a big thing about that is just the goaltending. Like James Reimer has been outstanding for the sharks so far this year i think um who was it jay fresh um tweeted out like the expected goals um you know starting goals above ex expectations so far this season um he has let in where was he at uh sorry goals saved above expected leaders so this is like how many if you were to compare this to an hour like a, a replacement level goalie how many they would give up. So James Reimer in his time, he's, he has, he's a plus 5.5. That means a, you know, a replacement level goalie is giving up five extra goals and five and a half extra goals in that time. So he's ranked sixth right now um, in that, in this season, like the sharks have good goaltending right now. And that's something that they haven't been able to put their, you know, like kind of lean on in the past three plus years now. And, um, you know, they're not going to blow people out, but like if they can play these kind of close games and, you know, like kind of grind out offense when they need to, like they're going to be in the mix. Most games, you know, you're going to have those games where you, you get, you know, like against, um, you know, like Colorado or something like that, where they're just joking out teams. But, you know, I think if the sharks, they, they can work on getting off to games a little bit uh, faster, you know, not being down, you know, one or two goals to start the the game. But like, you know, when they're up, when they score that first goal, you can see just how much better they play. And, um, you know, I, th I think the recipe's there for them to be in the mix in the long run. I know some of the uh, analytics and stuff like that are going to say like, you know, they're not shooting well or they're and stuff like that. But like, I don't know. There's just something about like just playing for your guy and there's a little bit of magic with the Sharks right now. And I, I like where they're heading. So uh, we'll be back tomorrow to preview the Sabres game. Uh, I sh we should have Kyle and I here. Um, so yeah, make sure you guys uh, check us out tomorrow. Um, you can find us of course, wherever you get your podcasts on Apple, Spotify, all that fun stuff. Um, if you haven't checked us out on YouTube, we are on YouTube. We're trying to get, uh, of course, we're trying to get to a thousand sub uh, subscribers, but right now I think we're right around 350. So make sure you guys are subscribing. Um, we're going to be also posting some of our old interviews on there too. So you can actually see the footage of like some of your uh, favorite prospects. We did Tristan Robbins over the weekend, and then we'll be doing like Ozzy and Ryan Merkley and guys like that, that we've done interviews for before. So especially if you're new to the show and haven't, um, been listening that long you can kind of go back and, and see some of the interviews that we've done with our favorite uh, prospects so um, you can also of course you can reach us at the show at locked on sharks on uh, twitter facebook and instagram um, you can also email us at locked on sharks at gmail.com you can find me my fry hole at uh, or me jd at my fry hole and kyle is at kyle demetrius and we'll be back tomorrow with, again, a preview of the Sabres game. Uh, thank you guys for making us your first listen. And go check out the Fancy Hockey Podcast or the uh, Locked on NHL show. And you guys have a great rest of your day.